Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches and everything you see here is for sale. To buy, trade, or sell, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. We sell what we buy, we buy what we sell. We are always looking to build inventory. Sell us one watch or an entire collection, no upper limit on value paid. That's tmasso at thewatchbox.com for the pricing of anything you see in this program. Jumping straight in now, we have something exceptionally rare. In fact, it's the first time I've encountered one of these. A Patek Philippe Nautilus 5712 GR for white gold and rose gold. Now, this was originally a 500-piece limited edition for Asia, but back around 2012-2013, due to popular demand, it became a very limited cataloged item for the entire world. And Although I've seen some of the rarest watches ever made, including multiple Philippe Dufours on this channel, it's the first example of one of these that's crossed my desk. Now, it's a standard 5712, which is, say, 40 millimeters, just a little bit over 8 millimeters thick. You can see that the two-tone effect here accomplished with white gold and rose gold, not yellow gold and steel, as is so common in the two-tone genre. The white gold is a little bit warmer than steel, and of course the rose gold is a little bit more colorful and endearing than yellow. Throwing it on the wrist, you can see it's also a strap-clad Nautilus, which makes it even a little bit more different. It is distinct from almost every other Nautilus model in terms of how it looks. In terms of how it fits, comfortable. I would say a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger. My wrist, for those of you who are new to the channel, is 16. There's your over-the-top, there's your cuff shot, easily sliding underneath a cuff. On the reverse side, you can see characteristic of the 5712 series, and the 3712 before that. The 240 micro rotor, automatic winding with 48 hour power reserve, a 3 hertz beat rate. You've got a Patek Philippe seal, Gyromax style free sprung balance. You have a anti magnetic silicon hairspring. All of these features together add up to a watch that is extraordinarily accurate, but also with a screw down crown, 60 meters water resistant, and with the hairspring anti-magnetic, so a fair amount of resilience. Now, I wouldn't swim with it using this leather strap, but Patek does make a rubber strap that looks just like the leather, and with that, you can actually surface swim this watch. On the dial, lateral striations, a little bit of a gradient fade, uh, lighter at the center, darker at the edge, rose gold, hands and indices, coaxial moon phase and date, power reserve indicator, small second, and we have a clasp, as you can see, that is actually collection-specific, being Nautilus-labeled. It is a double fold with twin trigger release. As you can see, internally, it is made of white gold. And this white gold is actually gray gold, or a type of white gold that is 18 karat white all the way through and never needs to be rhodium-plated. So Basically, gray gold is the good white gold. You can see we have this lovely pale rose Nautilus pin on top of the buckle, a really special piece. We'll do a quick loom shot for this. As you can see, no shortage of luminescence. And the intricacy and the finish of the Nautilus case and bezel combination, present and correct, a rare opportunity. Now, a 2020 launch to expand the then new Alango Unzona Odysseus line. This is the Odysseus in white gold. Again, gray gold, the good stuff. 40.5 millimeters in diameter. It's a little bit over 11 millimeters thick. We've got this spectacular sunray style, small seconds and hour track. This watch also has no shortage of luminescence. You can see it's quite easy to read. The watch includes a rubber strap. So this one is ready to swim and with a screw down crown. This is actually a 120. 20 meter water resistant watch, hands, frames for the calendar, and the indices themselves in white gold. And then we have the datomatic features with the quick sets for both the day and the double digit date cleverly incorporated into the shoulders of the crown. And the pusher feel is outstanding. Beautifully decorated. You can see these cases step out a little bit. Although visibly related to longa cases, particularly where the stepped lugs are concerned, this is a distinct shape created specifically for the Odysseus. We've also got a buckle that's only used on the Odysseus sports model, similar to other longa buckles, but you can see that it's a little bit thicker in profile with this contrasting finish, something designed expressly for a very special watch. Now on the reverse side, you can see the movement with a freehand engraved full balance bridge 
uh, is caliber 155 one it's actually an adaptation of the l086 and so the 086 has a three hertz beat rate this is actually the first longer movement with a four hertz rate to better resist shock and concussion and vibration induced timing deviation for the same reason the 086 is single-sided balance cock because a dual anchored balance bridge which gives it more stability against shock we've got a free sprung balance wheel automatic winding note that the mass itself here is platinum not gold for more winding efficiency and then we have german silver bridges and plates in that pale golden hue the nickel copper zinc alloy re retaining some of the copper golden hue that's where its shade comes from this is the same material that's used to make guitar frets fun fact we have anglage we have polished screws blued screws engine turning around the sides and a 50 hour power reserve it's an easy watch to wear as you can see on my wrist very comfortable fairly broad though for a 40.5 i would say it wears a little bit largish so 15 centimeters circumference and up you can see how it wears on my 16 centimeter wrist a lovely piece very comfortable very low slung it could be your dress watch if you wanted it to be a great entry from longa into the sports watch genre without plagiarizing gerald genta so many others take that route longa went its own way all right, here's something fun and rare that was made from 2001 to 2004. This is the IWC GST Retropont, a watch that is a split second chronograph. Here we have a lovely salmon dial. We have a day and date calendar with double quick set. And then we have a split second functionality as devised by Richard Hobring. Now, this system first debuted back in the early 1990s on the Pilot Watch Doppel Chrono series. But what we have here is a full-fledged sports watch, screw-down crown, 120-meter water resistance. We have the full integrated bracelet. It's a GST. So as you can see from the bottom, every single one of these links is removable for fine-tuning the fit. We have a wonderfully supple bracelet structure with a single-fold deployment that includes internal engine turning or perlage. The dial with several different focal planes. You can see it has a stepped track outboard for seconds and fractions then you step down to the hour track with its twinkling faceted rhodium plated steel indices and then the center dial old school iwc fish crown remember this is borderline vintage as these watches were made between 2001 and 2004 and this one was actually retailed back in 2003 44 hour power reserve automatic winding 7750 based but iwc did so much work to this movement they effectively made it their own with a combination of a new power source modifications to the drivetrain the addition of the doppel chrono function a new regulator balance and hairspring they really left no stone unturned and these are multi-position adjusted movements that easily run chronometer spec it's also got a wonderfully thick sapphire that creates almost a plexiglass like effect easy to wear but it's a big watch 43 millimeters i think if your wrist is my size or larger you're really going to like this and of course you've got that split second chronograph capability We'll do a quick loom shot as I always like to show the loom on these luminescent watches. Hands only, though plenty of loom on the hands. A really cool piece that is core IWC. You can see the reverse side. Chrono Retropont International Watch Co. Handsome old school GST design. And that one is in steel. This one's in grade 5 titanium. A 2021 launch from Ming. This is the 2011. This is the Mosaic. So 2,650 individual laser ablated forms on the sapphire crystal. You can see there's actually a surface sapphire. And then underneath that, several secondary layers of sapphire, including the different shades and different depths of cut, although it seems to have a bit of a gradient from lighter to darker. You can see from some angles, the cuts disappear altogether. Together. Now, they also use high ceram luminescent material, so we'll do a quick loom shot. You can see quite a bit of luminescence, including of the dial scatter. Very, very cool. A lot of fun to play with this one in the dark. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Ming, of course, a photographer and a collector out of Malaysia, building his watches with Schwarzetien of La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland. So these watches are made by Schwarzetien and powered by Schwarzetien movements. We have an Alcantara strap, and you can see on the bottom, it is actually rubber lined, so Alcantara on the top, a material typically associated with race cars, sports cars, premium headliners, and luxury cars. You can see we have evacuated flying lug profiles, uh, 
tonal contrast with a recessed center case, concave bezel with a satinated lip outboard and then a polished primary surface, a wonderful flare and teardrop tuck to those lug ends, the Ming logo on the crown. Uh, this watch, uh, fairly large, uh, 41.5 millimeters, but very, very, very light, 14.5 thick, so not super thin, but with a sloped case flank, it will fit underneath most dress cuffs. Uh, the watch comes with a carrying pouch, it also comes with an activator for the loom. Now flipping everything over, I know some people always ask, is the back also loomed? The back is not loomed, but we have a DLC coated and partially skeletonized Schwarzatia ASC 200 movement. So we've got a tungsten micro rotor, which energizes a 86 hour power reserve. You can see there is a stop seconds function, even though there is no seconds hand on the watch. We have a balance and a hairspring actually made by Schwarz Etienne's. They are a truly integrated manufacturer, able to make not just bridges, plates, and wheels, but also the sensitive parts of the assortment, the escapement, the balance, the hairspring. And you will appreciate that there's a handsome amount of beveling on these bridges. They're actually media blasted across their top. The screw heads are polished. There's a lovely engine cut guilloche style pattern outboard surrounding the movement and you can see slight solarization of the skeletonized barrel that shows you the mainspring within it is a deeply impressive movement that adds upscale cachet to this watch and every small piece is thoughtfully designed such as this buckle which includes satin media blast and polished titanium and then if you look you can actually see there are two anchoring points for the spring bar so you can micrometrically move them in or out to fine tune the fit a really cool piece the 20.11 from ming You might say this is the millinery that should have been. When the collection launched in 1995, a follow-up from Emanuel Getz, Roy Loco Offshore, he also did the millinery. It became that generation's oval watch. Seems like every generation has its oval watch. With Audemars Piguet in the 90s and the 2000s, it was this guy, the millinery. Now, the original millinery came out, it was 38 millimeters basically long. That's how I describe it, not wide, long. And then the second generation millineries used what you have here, which is the 47 seven millimeter long case, but this is the 4101 named after its movement. It debuted at the SE Oshosh in 2011, and it really was the definitive millinery dial side escapement and balance, a gilded bridge, a wonderful multi-planar dial from the hands all the way down through the steps of the dial to the movement, which has been ovalized and expanded to actually fit the dial side. Automatic winding with ceramic bearings and bi-directional winding action. It's got a 60 hour power reserve. It's free sprung with a full balance bridge for toughness. We have the coats of arms of the Audemars and Piguet families to remind you that AP is the oldest continuously family owned and run watchmaker in Switzerland. The finish, as you'd expect at this price point, does include a considerable amount of manual finish, but being an AP in the mainstream of its line, it also includes a good deal of mechanical finish. Where you can see that most obviously is in the beveling, which while polished, is actually very straight. You can see there's really no rounded curvature to those bevels, but they are polished and finished quite nicely, even though a machine was used to create the first pass. It is a beautifully luxurious watch with this multi-planar dial featuring a concentric pattern underneath, a sunburst center, off-centered seconds, skeletonized alpha hands, radially arrayed applique stylized Roman numerals with a watchmaker's four. And when I say this watch is long on the wrist, I mean long, like this. See how long it is? It's it's not broad across the wrist. It's about 49 millimeters, so roughly a Rolex watch on solid end links. Easy to wear even on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist. It is a dress watch, but it is not a staid or conservative dress watch. This is a flamboyant, extravagant, and exuberant statement of watchmaking luxury. You can see even the case is quite special with welded on lugs, an old school and expensive way of making a lug. Vertical satination, longitudinal satination, fluted lugs, lugs that override the outer case, then a stepped and polished bezel. It's a really good looking watch inside and out. It's probably what the millinery should have been from the beginning. Back in 2006, Debetun 
independent and only founded in 2002, the Batuna launched its first automatic movement in the DB20 series. So what we have here is a DB24 with the DB20 series signature shingle-like case. Now, while it's big, it's easy to wear. So don't be scared away by the 48 millimeter dimensions of the case. 48 is the diameter, but you can see it on the wrist, fairly thin and very light, being made all of titanium and sapphire. So we've got a titanium dial, a titanium matte blue or slate blue bezel, and a titanium case. The hands are blued titanium. Basically, everything that's blued is a different tone of fire-tempered titanium and fire-blued titanium, which is a signature of Debetun. Now, the watch features a screw-down crown and 200-meter water resistance, so this was also the the beginning of sports watch manufacture at Debetun. The company makes its own cases, dials, and movements, so when you buy one of these, even as far back as 2006, you're getting a lot of in-house savoir-faire, and very little has been left to suppliers. Look at those multi-part hands and the sophistication of their construction, the combination of polish and media blast and satin on the dial with the bolts used at some of the cardinal points of the dial to act as hour references for the hour and minute hands. Then we have the power reserve indicator up at the top that changes color as it charges and discharges. And then on the back we have the automatic winding system which has an incredibly broad rotor. And so that winds very efficiently with a precious metal mass and titanium rotor arms. But at the same time, it, it would also have a tendency to torque side to side, not just move with angular rotation. Uh, so the solution there is a patented system that uses four cantilever springs so that if it does want to torque, these springs will prevent that adverse movement that could otherwise damage the ball bearing and then reduce the friction. Denis Flageolet, founder and watchmaker at De Betune, put three joules in each spring for less friction when these surfaces do come into contact. Now, there's two barrels, automatic winding, six days of power reserve. We have one, two, three shock protection springs. That is patented. A hairspring of De Betune's own design. They don't make the alloy, but they do shape the curve cut it in half, clamp it back together. It's a flat hairspring that breathes concentrically like an overcoil, but has the flat profile of a flat hairspring. We have one, two, three shock protection springs that's called triple parachute that is designed to resist damage, of course, but also to restore the balance staff pivot into its pivot jewel as rapidly as possible. So it's there for durability, but also chronometry. And then finally, you can see that we have a blued titanium and several different matte shades, media blast, a snailing across the non-media blasted elements. We have black polished screws, six days of reserve, the power reserve complication, a remarkably modular case with many independent sculptural forms. And we'll throw this on my wrist. I mentioned that although 48, it wears fine on smaller wrists, I could wear this. It would probably be a little bit much, but it would be secure and comfortable, and it's not very thick. So if your wrist is 17 centimeters circumference or up, game on. You're going to find this is actually quite comfortable, and very, very few of these were made. I'm talking dozens. Now, this watch is more common but no less special. From 2001, F.P. Jorn built five different models as part of the Ruthenium series. So five models, 40 millimeters in platinum. There were 99 examples of each of the five models. And this is the Tourbillon Souverain. Now this is the only first generation Tourbillon Souverain that was made in 40 millimeters. So it's very appealing on that basis alone. With the Ruthenium series, you have a dial made of gold that's coated in that gray ruthenium material that gives it its color and intensity. And then on the back, this is brass movement era F.P. Jorn, but instead of being rhodium plated brass here, you can see that it is ruthenium coated brass. We've got the remontoire spring, which is part of a secondary escapement that for 28 of the 42 hours of power reserve, ensures constant force to the balance and thus constant amplitude. So with six position adjustment, a free sprung balance, and an overcoil hairspring, all that in combination with the remontoire creates a superb timekeeper. Jorn, and he told me this himself in his own words, kept the tourbillon for historical, cultural, and romantic reasons, not because it makes sense in a wristwatch, but because it is simply beautiful. It was his tribute to Breguet who is his horological hero. So it's there for its beauty. Everything else is there to make for a very 
precise watch. Now, the best finished part here is the actual tourbillon bridge, the cock for the remontoire, and then the filigree style, almost bell-shaped tourbillon cage. You can see how the bridge has been rounded across its top and polished continuously. That's grubel type finish. Jorn generally doesn't finish to that standard, but on the tourbillon assemblies, he makes exceptions. You can see that the filigree or wire style outline of the tourbillon carriage has been micro finished on its very spare surfaces. Then we have a chronometer style power reserve up at the top that progresses towards zero as you wind it. And so it works like a marine chronometer. It tells you the hours since it was last fully wound. The idea there being that a marine chronometer would have to be wound exactly 24 hours after its last winding. So it was important to know how many hours since winding, not how many hours until it stops. And so many watches from Jorn's collection that are described as chronomet or chronometer include that reverse acting power reserve indicator. Now this is a 40 millimeter watch. It's about 48 millimeters from lug to lug and it is quite thin at under 10 millimeters thick. So you'll find this is a really good fit. It is bigger than the first generation Tourbillon Remontoir series one through four, but it is still quite a bit smaller than the current vertical Tourbillon. Very neat piece, 99 made. Of course, we are looking at Eleanor cases made in France. That's why you have French hallmarks on this Swiss watch. Finally, and I knew I was going to end with this piece, the coolest Roger Dubuis I have ever encountered. Sympathy 37, perpetual calendar, yes, but this is the Sympathy 37 minute repeating perpetual calendar. So in white gold, 37 millimeters with the Sympathy 1 case design, you can see it has the characteristic dial, inner bezel, crystal, outer bezel, and case symmetry where all of them have the same contour lines rather than the Sympathie 2 which had a circular crystal and inner bezel. Now we do have a perpetual calendar and a moon phase. We have not quarter Arabic numerals, though we have four numerals, a lovely Art Nouveau or Breguet style, half frosted alpha style hands, perpetual calendar, no adjustments needed until the year 2100, welded lug construction, beautifully micro finished case profiles with satin and polish, including juxtaposition, a full clasp. This watch is full box and papers. And then on the reverse side, we have a Geneva Hallmark Roger Dubuis caliber 2639, which I believe, and I'm 99% sure on this, is a Lemania 389, very similar to what you would see, for example, on many contemporary Breguet minute repeaters. Taking a look at it, it's very attractive, beautifully finished, Geneva hallmark, handsome stripes, mile-wide bevels, including sharp interior angles where bevels converge, black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism, overcoil hairspring, black polished and beveled steel cap to the escape wheel cock, and then a lovely vintage-inspired pocket watch like click and click spring in a single unitary component. You can also see solarization on the barrel, and all screw heads black polished with five position adjustment. And then we've got these black polished, beveled, and sharp pointed strikers. You can also see it uses a concealed governor, which is not immediately visible, uh, beautifully decorated. And really the bevels here are the real deal, hand finished to a gorgeous degree. We may as well fire this up. This is actually one of the best sounding repeaters that I have encountered that hail from the 80s and the 90s period. So I'm gonna do my best to set 1259 here and then fire it up. It is quite excellent. For a vintage repeater movement in a precious metal case, this really pegs the meter. This is outstanding. This is on par with the quality of Patek repeaters from the same period. It will cost you less money, but I would also judge that given the scarcity of these, this may also be less common 
than Patek repeaters from the 90s and early 2000s. An outstanding watch that's a nice fit at 37 millimeters, super versatile. This could be the cornerstone of even the most impressive collections of independent brand watches. And it hails from an era when Roger Dubuis really was a pioneer in the independent space. If you love these watches, reach out to me. I am T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.